Hi, this is Scott from Pipeline Effects. Here I'll demonstrate the main features of Cube's GUI interface. Cube GUI is the most frequently used, artist friendly, cross platform interface that complements the command line and scripting interfaces of Cube. As with all the interfaces, the Cube GUI is unlicensed, so you have unlimited use for submitting and managing jobs in the render farm. So, let's get started. First, we'll bring up the Cube GUI interface and start with the menus. The file menu lets you save your preferences, save a separate set of studio preferences, and open the simple commands interface directory. The view menu is just a few items for refreshing the cache and finding information. From the submit menu, you can pick from a wide range of the main 2D and 3D applications of the market. This list can be further extended by adding new interfaces as they are dynamically loaded. We'll touch on that in a bit. The administration menu lets you start and stop cube services, install licenses, and view logs. It can also be hidden for non-admins. The help menu gives you direct access to all documentation, including dynamically generated help for job types, and links to the website for contacting pipeline effects. The preferences dialog lets one configure the interface refresh, external image viewers, network paths for job interfaces, submit time path translation maps, query filters, and list columns, and using a studio-wide set of default preferences. Some of these parameters can also be set via the command line or from the environment variables. All right. Let's move on to submission. We'll pull up a sample submission dialog, say for Maya. The parameters are organized in collapsible groups. All red parameters are required. All others are optional overrides. The expert toggle shows and hides advanced or non-default parameters to simplify viewing when there are many options available. The preset sets, sets or stores the current values for the interface as default. As standard cube parameters, you can specify name, priority, host, and groups to run the jobs on. The priority cluster lets you have a higher priority to run jobs in certain machines, which is very useful if you have more than one project. Job dependencies allow you to set up per job and per frame dependency chains between jobs. Run this job after this other one completes, for example. The generate movie gives you a quick way to create a chaser job. It lets you take the resulting images and turn them into a quick time movie. There's also advanced features for retrying jobs as well as adding notes. You can even have it email you when the jobs are done. Now let's go over the layout views that are each designed for a specific function. The job layout is designed to show all job information. The job list is a customizable list of columns with full right-click menu actions to modify the jobs, including modifying them on the fly, taking jobs in and out of the queue, killing jobs, or viewing the results. The agenda and sub-job process tabs show the status and information on individual frames. There are also a number of panels to provide further information on the jobs. The Properties panel on the right shows the basic status, times, and package data for the jobs. The Highlights, Standard Out, and Standard Air panels show the information coming from the Standard Out and Standard Air for the job processes, which are filterable by clicking on the job, frame, or process. The Frame Time panel gives you quick visual insight as to the frame render times for the entire job. The Job Timeline shows you a graphical view of the processes themselves. The output panel will display the images for most of the main common formats for all output parts from this job standard out. In addition to the internal image viewer, one can also use your own external viewer specified in the preferences. To round it out, there's also the history, stats, and callbacks to give advanced information on the jobs as well. The search bar and status toggles and user toggle provide ways to filter jobs displayed for particular status, naming, or submitter. For example, artists are usually focused on their own jobs, so the user toggle allows them to only see their own jobs, while a render angler may want to see all the jobs for all users. The farm layout displays the information about the render farm itself. You can see individual worker properties, per machine resources, configuration, status, and also what they're running. You can also see current summary stats on the render farm itself and its global variables. On the fly, one can take machines on and off the farm or put them back on, with the lock and unlocks actions. One can also specify how many process slots are available, usually one for most of the main multi-threaded renders and possibly more slots for low resource processes. If on the supervisor, one can also essentially configure all worker machines on the farm to set their groups, priority clusters, resources, and other parameters. The chart layout provides current and historical information on the render farm and its jobs. It gives you insight on how your hardware and software are used and what's needed to meet your rendering needs. Do you need more machines, more licenses, when is your farm mostly being used? It will give you some concrete information instead of you having to rely on just guesses. 
This information can be filtered and categorized by user, job type, project, and in many other ways. The pending load chart lets you see the filterable information about what's in the queue. The formulization chart shows you the information about what's currently running, and the worker slots shows you what process slots are available on the farm and what's locked but potentially available. The admin layout gives you a graphical display on the users and groups. It provides an interface to let an admin modify the individual user permissions. This view also can be hidden for non-admin users in the preferences. In conclusion, the Cube GUI provides a production-friendly, easy-to-use interface for managing your render farm and providing insights as to how your farm is being used. Please contact Pipeline Effects, an authorized reseller, or a Cube certified consultant near you for questions or feedback you have about the Cube product.